this is Cute Fuzzy Weasel, and welcome to another Painting with Weasel, or Paint with Weasel. I can't remember what I called it. So yesterday, we took a blank canvas and turned it into a slightly better blank canvas. But today, we're gonna take this and actually put an image on it. Sort of. We'll put the preliminary stuff on for an image. It's pretty simple, which means this episode's boring. Again! But before we start smearing paint all over this, let's discuss the image we're gonna create. Now, because a lot of people say that this is kind of like Bob Ross, I have no idea why. Have you seen Bob Ross? Look at this picture of Bob Ross. Now look at me. Now look at Ross. Now look at me again. Now look at Ross. Now look at me. Clearly Ross was in the Air Force. I've never joined any branch of the military. It's very easy to see that. So anyway, we'll be painting a forest, but because I have some kind of anxiety problem, this forest will reflect my personality. So it'll be dark and dead and desolate, just like me. I'm thinking though for this, we're gonna keep the canvas oriented this way, horizontally, because I don't know, I, I, I kinda like, landscapes to go on wide, you know? I mean, we could do it like this, but honestly, the sky in this picture is gonna be kind of drab. In fact, the sky and the bottom of the picture is gonna be kind of drab. The real action's gonna be going on in the middle, and that's important for figuring out how you want to orient your canvas exactly. You gotta think about where is the action, or where is the focus gonna be in this piece? If we were doing a vase of flowers, then yeah, I would orient it like this because you wanna fit the entire vase into it. But for landscapes, typically you want horizontal because that's just kind of how human vision is, you know? We don't see a whole lot of up and down, we see a lot of side to side. That's why a lot of our computer monitors are all oriented like this, and you see stuff like widescreen, and, and higher resolution formats are always a little wider than they are tall. So let's talk about some of the equipment we'll be using. Well, the first thing we're definitely gonna need is this thing called a brush. Now, I know I didn't go over brushes last time, but that's because I have a brain stump. Now, back when I took the one art class that inspired me to do this less than three months ago, remember, I'm an expert. I heard a lot of people bragging about how much their brushes cost, and I tried a few of the more expensive brushes, and to be honest, it doesn't matter. I mean, yes, if you're going for stuff that's super fine detailed, then yes, you want a brush that's got very fine bristles, and yes, typically they are more expensive. But to be honest, you can just go to Walmart and pick up a $2.99 pack of brushes, and you'll be fine so long as you don't abuse them. And even if you do, hey, they're $2.99. Plus, it takes a lot to break these things. I mean... I think I actually ran this over with a car. Also for today, we'll be using paint, specifically black and white. See, the title of this piece, which you should know by looking at the title of this video, is called Ghost Forest. It represents my dreams. And it's gonna be primarily a black, white, gray, and maybe we'll add some blue in there, but for the purposes of foreground and background, we're gonna be using black and white. Don't worry, we'll be going into more detail at some point in the distant future. As far as paint goes, it's really more up to you. Now, you can test things out by getting samples and just seeing how they dry, because that's really the end goal when it comes to paint. It can look really nice when it's wet, but as soon as it dries, you gotta make sure that it doesn't dull or become super shiny or become super matte. You wanna make sure that you get the right paint for you, and the right paint for you is not necessarily expensive. Remember, when it comes to painting and really just art and shit, the right equipment is not necessarily the most expensive equipment. I mean, we're not filming movies here. We're making a painting. You don't need to spend a whole lot of money to make a painting. The next thing we'll be using is this, a paper plate. So we'll be using a paper plate to mix the paints on. This is a pretty good solution. Now, you can use plastic plates, you know, plastic disposable plates, which is probably a little better. I'm going with paper just because I'm cheap. And the paper will last, and we'll be going over ways to extend the life of it in towards the end of this episode, yeah. And finally today, we'll be using this, painter's tape. 
The style of art that I do uses a lot of painter's tape. Painter's tape is your friend. Now when it comes to painter's tape, I kind of have to go back on what I said. You don't want to go cheap when it comes to the tape. Cheap tape will bleed. It'll rip the paint wrong. This, this is pretty good painter's tape. And it's not going to pull the paint up that it's on. And it's not going to let a whole lot of paint bleed through it. And that's really what we want. We're using the painter's tape to get a good crisp edge. And for that, you kind of don't want to go with the cheap shit. That being said, I bought all of my painter's tape in a pack of like six for $12 because Lowe's was having a sale. So again, not necessarily breaking the bank material. Breaking the bank. what I say? You said branking. Branking is not a word, at least not in English. I think it means something in Romulan, though. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do the foreground. Now, you always wanna start when it comes to really any picture, you always wanna start with the foreground. And the reason you wanna do that is if you start with the background, like what we're gonna start with, because we're starting with the background, you always wanna start with the background when you make a painting, because if you start with the foreground, you'll have to paint around the foreground to make the background. If you start with the background, you can just draw on top of it to create your foreground, and that's what we want to do here. Our background's gonna be the black, miserable sky. Remember, the horizon line in this particular image is gonna be where most of the action's gonna be taking place, or where the focal point's really gonna be. And because of that, I'm thinking maybe we want the horizon almost right in the middle of the picture. In fact, I think the middle of the picture would be best. So. Let's get out a ruler. By the way, we're gonna be using a ruler and just see here. So this canvas is 16 inches um, long. It's 16 inches long, which means we want our horizon line to be at the eight. So we're gonna get a pencil. We're also gonna be using a pencil and just marking that eight, right there. And we're gonna mark the eight on this side too. We're gonna kinda level it out. And you wanna go light when it comes to drawing directly on the canvas, you wanna go light. Because if you go too hard, you'll mess up the canvas. That's why I'm just barely laying this thing on here. Now, we're gonna take our painter's tape, the stuff you don't want to skimp out on. We're gonna get ourselves, um, this ought to be good. When it comes to the painter's tape, always tear off just a little more than you think you're gonna need. Because you never know. Your eyes could fool you. Eyes typically lie to people. Mine, for example, kept telling me, hey, you're hurt. And I kept thinking, no, I'm not. I'm only hurting my head. All right. Now that we've applied it, you also want to take these corners of it and you want to roll them just, you don't want to like stick them directly on like the back of it and really press them down. You just want to have them rolled just over the corners, uh, just, just over the edges here. So now that we have that down, we want to very gently and sometimes, you know, you can use the back of your nail, and sometimes you can use your fingertips. It's really up to you, but you don't want to, you don't want to press down on this. But okay, it looks like that's good. Get our paper plate. Oh, we're also going to be using a jar full of water. We're going to flip the canvas over, because we're going to be adding a lot of black paint to this part of it. And even though we have the tape here, and that's going to protect from spillage, if it runs past this, then, I mean, we're gonna paint over this side anyway, but you don't wanna have that kind of deformation and have to sand it down. I read in the comments that someone suggested sanding down the marks, but I'm lazy and I don't wanna do that. I'm gonna want a generous amount of the black. Although you'd be surprised, a little bit of black goes a long way. Start doing this. Now, when it comes to tape, 
when you when you start painting on top of the tape that you want to mark down you know mark across where you want your uh, detail to go you never ever want to paint up you never want to paint up into the edge because you're going to force paint up underneath it and you're not going to get as clean of a line so what you want to do is you want to paint across going down or you just want to paint straight up straight up paint down that was a pun i'm sorry now you don't have to add as much as what i'm adding i tend to slather on a whole bunch of paint because i don't know i just like how it looks i like how i move in and out of accents that's a habit of mine, because I'm ashamed of what my actual accent sounds like. Fun fact, I've never used it on camera, or in public, with anybody, or the family. So nobody knows what I really sound like. I should mention that yesterday when I was watching the stuff dry because I had nothing better to do, I did see that the holes that I saw in the canvas got filled in with the gesso. Gesso can fill in small holes. Now, if we ever have a canvas on this show that needs major repair, I'll show you how to do that. But suffice to say, what it involves is putting, uh, cutting out a, a piece of canvas from some canvas that you might have, and lay, you know, laying it on with the water and, and putting it on with the water, and then uh, covering it with a gel medium or some kind of glue that's not going to create a stain on the other side or some kind of bump. So we've achieved a layer here, and I'm just going through and covering up some of the areas that are um, not, uh, not covered up with the paint quite yet. No matter what you do, your first layer is never going to fully cover what you're doing. You always want to have at least two layers on something, because as the paint dries, it contracts on the surface, and inevitably you end up with spots that just don't have the kind of coverage you want. And now we let the paint dry. All right, so we've given it uh, some time to dry, and everything looks like it's okay. There's still some spots right around here where the paint's not completely covering everything, but... It's close enough to the horizon that um, I think we'll be okay. Now, let's go ahead and get this tape off. Shit, it's on my hands. Not bad. There's some bleed through, but that'll be okay because we're going to flip this over. Now we're going to make the other side of the horizon. Now, when you line up the tape, you kind of want to make sure that the way you're holding the tape doesn't bow out because what what can happen is if you if you pull it like this you can bow it and that can create some issues with the seal the last thing you want to do is have issues with that seal or have creases or areas where the paint can work its way up through here but all right so i know i said black and white but let's be honest we just painted it white. I mean, we painted it black. We just painted it black, but before that, we just painted it... We painted it white first. So I'm gonna go with something a little more gray. So I've got some black here. Now, because the gray that I'm gonna make is also gonna be incorporated into the trees that are gonna be working their way through here, we want to make a little more than we actually need for this one part. Let's mix that in. I'm gonna go with, um, for this gray, let's make the ratio about 75% white and 25% black. So, a little more white there. It's not an exact science. In fact, it's not even science. It's witchcraft.
So in the middle of painting, my camera memory filled up, so now I have another card in here, and I don't know how much space that has on it. Um, and I'm really not even sure where I left off. So I'm going to just kind of hope it left off right in the middle of my statement. I'm making a raised texture on the canvas because I like having an actual physical texture in with the, uh, in with the colors and not just the illusion of a texture. So how I'm doing that is I'm almost scooping up some of the paint with the corner of the brush. And when I place it, I'm placing it with that corner and I'm kind of dumping paint onto the canvas. Now when the paint dries, this will create little kind of almost hills and, and valleys and, and ridges in with the image. And it'll create shadows in different lighting conditions. And I like that. With doing that, you have to be a little careful though, because some acrylics when they dry, if there's too much weight on them, if there's too much material there, they'll crack. Unless you're also kind of going for that, in which case more power to you. This is my style, so if you're watching this in hopes that I'll tell you how to create photorealistic benches and shit, well, sorry, I, I'm not here to do that. I don't even know how to do that. If you know how to do that, put in the comments below how to do that, because I want to know. Okay, so it's been a day. The paint has dried. You can kind of see if you really look, and I'm not sure that'll show up on the camera, but there are some cracks in the heavier parts of the uh, uh, paint, the, the thicker parts of the paint, but that's okay because that's what I'm going for. And I don't know how to not have that happen, aside from not layer it on so thick. Let's go ahead and take this off of here, being very careful to not pull too hard. There we go. Okay. Oh. Yeah, it's on my... Yeah. Shit. God damn it. Yeah. Okay, that's pretty good. That's a nice clean edge. And because I layered the paint on so thick, it's an actual physical edge. You can feel it going up there. So that's good. That's a good base. All right, so on this episode, we've turned a canvas that looked like this into a canvas that looks like this. Not bad, not bad. We're, we're on track, I think. I don't know, I usually just make this up as I go along. Next time, we'll start adding in some details of the sky and start adding in some of the forest. It's gonna look great! And remember, all you budding artists out there, I have had no formal training and probably don't know what I'm talking about.